Ladies and gentlemen, you tuned in. New episode, Music is Love Language. I'm your host, Clint Coley. No AKAs. Let's get down to business. Okay. This guy that I got on the podcast, right? If you see him, right? He, you one of them guys like, <laughs> ah, 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 I know him. If you know, you know. Brent, I'm not going to put your title out there because I don't want people sl- sliding in your DMs or anything like that. But let's just say, can, can, are we allowed to say? or I, You can say what you want. Okay, listen. This motherfucker <laughs> run the Roots Picnic Tournament. Run the, okay. <laughs> this motherfucker run the Roots Picnic <laughs> Time out. See, Time out. Exactly. That's what you did. <laughs> Hold on. Just for editor's note. I got to stare. He said, stare in the camera for any. So I am the festival director for the Roots Picnic. However, the people that run it are Sean G, Tim <laughs> Trotter, and, and Amir Thompson. However, you know, I, so, play a, I play a little bit of a role in the shit. Listen, but go ahead. All I know is that the two years that I've been involved in that, Amir has not called me once. <laughs> He'll walk over to the spot. He'd be like, yo, Clint, like what you're doing here. I'm like, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. But you, you know what? If I, You know what, though? If you don't say I can come, then I ain't coming. So, that's real. <laughs> that's as real as it gets. But no, all jokes aside, yeah. yo, I'm gonna, before, we, before we start, though, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to give the Roots Picnic their flowers. There was a time in hip-hop history, right, where Philadelphia, when you mark on the calendar around late October, mm-hmm. we all know being from Philly, Powerhouse was the thing growing up. Yep. That was the concert. And this is no diss to them, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I feel like every year we are now looking forward to who is going to be on the Roots Picnic and that how it's going to top last year. That means a lot. That is, I can unequivocally say that. This is me not even being a part of it. This is me being a fan of the Roots Picnic before I was a part of it. But we're happy that you're a part of it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. We're happy you know? that you're a part of it. But no, but real talk. So yeah. when we, like the Roots Picnic now, and it's not just you, it's the kickoff to... Uh, Kick off to the summer in Philly. You know what I'm saying? It's the kick off to yeah. everything. So it's yeah. like, you know, it ends with, uh, you know, Made in America, which mm-hmm. was the, you know what I mean? It ends with Made in America, yeah. but it's really, the Roots Picnic is the yeah, Roots Picnic. It's, it's, so it's, it's it, Philly. It, it it's feels, Philly. It feels, it, what you just said is correct. It mm-hmm. feels like the kick off to the summer. Mm-hmm. I understand for a lot of people, mm-hmm. Memorial Day weekend is the official mm-hmm. or unofficial kick off to the summer. But yep. for me, and I think being in Philly two years straight, like, bro, not only let's just talk about your influence around the city. Mm-hmm. Yo, the city gets active. It gets very active. Yo, like I've never like 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 and, like, and, and tell me your experience too. But like yeah. my experience in the last two years, like I've seen different party promoters do different things. I've seen you know yeah. I've DJed on stuff. I've been on part of comedy shows. Yeah, this this and yo, am I tripping or everybody eats? Everybody gets money. Everybody gets money yeah. during Roots Picnic yeah, Weekend, and dog. we try to make sure that, and we don't block. See, one thing I'm big on, yeah, especially with black folk, especially yeah. with us. Yeah. I'm not going to block you from doing an after party because it's not the official Roots, Roots Picnic. picnic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen motherfuckers do that. Like, oh, it's, <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. you know, shit like that. Yeah, we know, we, we know Live Nation don't got shit to do with your party, my nigga. But we know that. We know, we know that. You know, do we you? see you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not big on that. But so I want to make sure everybody can be yes. a part of it. And then even there are some promoters, or, you know, I'm not going to talk about it now, but there yeah. are promoters where they're going to be incorporated into the Roots Picnic mm. in 2024. Because mm. that's that's what I'm big on, too. Like, yeah. I want to make sure that, you know, local, like our culture yeah. is fed in Philly when we're, when we're talking about the picnic. And that's a big thing to me. Like, you know, just in just one party in particular, right? Like last year, for sure. I didn't go this year, not because yeah. I didn't want to, because I just didn't have the, it wasn't in the schedule. But you, me, and R&B. Yes. I went last year and I remember Ed hit me up, Tyrone hit me up, I was like, yo, HPK hit me, I was like, yo, Clint, man, you gotta come to the, you gotta come, you gotta you gotta mm-hmm. slide through, you gotta slide through. I'm like, look, I'ma come, I just, you know, give me, you know, I got but I got like five or six people with me. He's mm-hmm. like, nah, don't worry about it. When I can tell when I tell you that the five, six people with me didn't fucking matter. Yeah. That <laughs> it didn't fucking matter. It's lit- I mean, you know me, because I mean I'm a performer, I'm an entertainer. Yeah. I know like I don't want to take money out of nobody's pockets. One person mm-hmm. I can always do. Two, all right, three, you draw on four, yo, chill, unless I like you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like four bad women. You get right, you, right, right. you know the politics. But the point I'm making is, is that I went there and I was like, yo, I've never seen this many people. And you know what's crazy? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one more thing out there. Did anybody have any, was there any violence of any kind? Let me, you said look at camera too. Yeah. There was zero violence. Zero at violence. At the fucking Roots picnic. It looks like there was zero violence like, last year. Right. Just like there was zero violence yeah. before that. We yeah. do not, so. Yeah, bro. It's, wh- it's, it, but what I'm saying is, 
when I not just this, and I'm gonna let you talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying the zero violence in the sense there's like you know people claim there's violence and stuff. Yeah. I mean like, bro, it's hard to see Roots Picnic Week and see people walking around with frown, just angry. I was about to say you took it from me. You just see, angry, like yeah. what, it is black joy. Like yes. when you walk through into Fairmount Park and you go through the mm -hmm. magnetron, the metal mm -hmm. detector, mm -hmm. and you go enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. No one's even fighting. No one's even arguing. It's it's so beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so beautiful to see literally mm -hmm. 25, 30,000 mm -hmm. black folk mm -hmm. per day mm -hmm. just having a good time. Just having a good time. And 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 that's that's the thing, right? Like, I look at the pictures and things from the from the events and stuff like yeah. that. And it's like, the joy is not just on the artist's face. Mm -mm. The joy is not mm -mm. even just on the people who are going faces. You see joy amongst the people who work in the staff. Like, yo, like security is yeah. cool, dog. Yes. Like no, and when I say cool, like they not they not on bullshit. But it's like they cool. Like there's no like, bro, every like it's literally to me, that's the biggest you know, black, bl pure black joy, you're going, that's pure black joy at its finest. Yes. In Philadelphia. No ifs, no ands, no buts about it. To me, I've realized the Roots Picnic is the biggest festival or the biggest concert. I'm going to say on the East Coast period. And I'm not, I don't know about everywhere else. Mm -hmm. I'm just not, I'm, the only reason why I'm not making a, a, a definite statement about it being the, the biggest everywhere, just because I don't, I don't, I don't know the numbers of everybody else and I don't feel like getting into that. The point I am making is, is that the Roots Picnic is a good fucking time, man, and you guys ensure that. And here's the second thing, and this is just another thing for me as a consumer and somebody on both sides now. Bro, y'all listened to the people last year and y'all changed. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Y'all listen, yeah. like, like y'all, so, it's, I can tell, like, you know, last year, of course, there was a little cu couple of comments. Yeah. People was feeling some Oh, no, it was more than a couple of comments. I can, <laughs> I, can, no, I can keep it real with you on that. No, there were more than a couple of comments yeah. about the experience. Yes. About audio issues, yeah. about VIP issues, yeah. just yeah. issues. Yes. I took it personally. Yes, you did. I took it personally. Like, you looked at the screen like Michael I, Jordan and said... <laughs> I, yeah, I took it personally. Yeah. I took it personally. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, so now I got to come back. Yes. And it's got to be, what's yeah. that? Game six, Utah yes. Jazz. Yes. And we yes. got to come in and execute. Yes. Yes. We're going to yes. use the Jordan analogy. And we we delivered. The biggest thing I could say that y'all did deliver on that was a big notice. Mm -hmm. Bro, we weren't, we weren't, nobody was late. This was not a behind schedule show. I, I don't need, I, I mean... Lauren Hill wasn't. Lauren Hill was not late, bro. That's what I wanted people to say. <laughs> Lauren Hill was not late. Lauren Hill was, and it's like, I know, like, people keep saying, well, that's if she show up. I'm like, look, I'm 99% sure they not fucking with her, yo, dog. Like, <laughs> yo ass, like, because I know, so performing in Vegas, right? They yeah. have a clause in every contract. And when you do a show in Vegas, they are not allowed to physically start the show, whether the... Correct. Until the headliner is in the building. So the opening act... Cannot go on Correct. stage until the until the headliner is present in the building. Mm -hmm. That is a that's a rule, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Of course, y'all didn't do that. Of course, y'all Lauren Hill ain't you know. And I don't know where she lived, but I'm pretty sure she don't live far from Philly, right? Mm -hmm. I say that to say it was like wow. Like not only did y'all get her to show up and show out, but y'all had almost the one of the most iconic moments of the past 25, 30 years in hip hop where you was able to get all three. Like I remember. Amir said this to me early that morning. I'll never yeah. forget. I'm like setting up for the Royal Caesar Space, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, man, you did your thing with this field. It's going to be a crazy shit. He's like, yeah, man, but wait till you see what we got later. I'm like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, yo, you ain't hearing from me, but the Fuji's is here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I want to talk about just, and, and we're going to talk about just festivals in general. Yep. We're going to have that conversation in a second, but I really yep. want to get personal on this podcast just because I want people to hear you know, again, the other side of it, right? Yeah. Like, you guys, we talk about these festivals, we plan on going to these festivals, we get flights, we get hotels, we do all that, and it's good to hear that y'all really take this shit seriously. Right? Nah, we got to. So tell me some things, the changes that you know for a fact that you specifically say, or not you made personally. Yeah, no, no, no. But talk to me about what was y'all mindset of, uh, I guess, y'all heard what, 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 the, what the outcry was, what were y'all, because I mean, even with the VIP, you could not get the fuck back, even me, dog, like, I'm talking about, we got, we wristband up, dog, like, no, nah, bro, you ain't got on the right color. You ain't I got can't the right let color. You... We 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 took everything. So Talk let's let me start from the moment you walk in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, to your point, everybody was on time. Yes. We were very big on with our artist relations team. Shout mm. out to to Silver Monty and his team. Mm. Make sure we get everybody on time. Make sure they get everything that they need. Make mm. sure that all the dressing rooms are set up. Mm. So things that you wouldn't, as a consumer, you don't even know what's going on. No, but we know, know yes. that that will impact. Mm -hmm. The time your artist gets on stage, yes. your favorite artist. Yes. We developed, uh, this year we had a food court. 
so we had a, a, a single base yes. where everybody, you know, all of our biggest food vendors, mm-hmm. food trucks, everything was in one area. I don't know if you saw that. I remember not. that. Yeah, I was there. I went to but uh, the, my home friend of mine. She had a, she had a, everybody eats. Yeah. I went, uh, yeah, I went. Oh, dope. Yeah. So dope, uh, dope, dope. Yeah, shout out, shout out to you, Steph. Got some food from her. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason we did that was we had food dispersed in a lot of different places. Mm-hmm. The lines were backed up because some of the lines were queuing where people were trying to sit down in the, like one of our main areas near the main stage. Mm-hmm. That was a huge complaint. Complaint because mm, people were trying to mm, order, yeah. but then people were trying to sit down. It was it was a mess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Check two. Check. Yeah. VIP. Yo, there's too many niggas in VIP. <laughs> there's too many niggas in VIP. Talk to them. They Brandon. didn't pay. Talk to them. Brandon. They didn't pay eight hundred dollars. They didn't Facts. pay twelve hundred dollars to be here. Why? How they get in here? Facts. How? Because they, they know the security guards. They know this person. Facts. Okay. So it's something called RFID technology. Yes. So you put the wristband on. Yep. You get scanned. If the shit is green, you go. Yeah. If the shit is red, you going. don't go. Mm. Security will stop you. Yeah. Security was cool, as you said. But they will but stop you. They niggas. will stop you. Yes, sir. And so niggas were standing outside of VIP like they was in the club, like trying to Bro, get in. When I tell you, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, I t- and I'm talking about, I seen cats I've known for <laughs> years. Yo, what's up, Clint? Yeah, man. <laughs> My shit green, baby. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I rem- I remember that like it was like so so last year it was a lot of like yo your homie could get back there but like no 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 diss right like I was on the side of the stage damn near when Mary before Mary J Blige made everybody clear yep. the stage right yep. no diss to, like and this I mean I'm not diss but I shouldn't be backstage with Mary J I shouldn't be there right right like even though I'm a part of everything and Mary don't know me Mary people unless don't know you me. were a part of Mary J Blige is like oh yeah Clint can be there yeah, yeah exactly like there's no reason for me to be back there like if I'm Dude. if I, and that's me looking at it from an of, of, from an objective standpoint correct correct I should not be back there correct so at the end of the day if that's the case if you didn't pay eight hundred or twelve hundred dollars for VIP gold or VIP silver my nigga you need and again, when we talk about, v- or unless you had an arrangement with somebody that Correct. got you a VIP Correct. wristband. Other than that, bro, there's no reason why you, why are you here? Mm-hmm. And yes, it did look like, the, it looked like niggas trying to get in the club. It, I, was, it was wild. Look, I, I'm not going to say his name, but one motherfucker in particular was art, like, he's somebody prominence manager. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying no names, but no he, was, he was ar- literally like, yo, you just saw me, blah, 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 blah. Yo, you just saw, and the guy looked like, I don't give a fuck that I just saw you, dog. <laughs> like, you, I, last time I saw you, you didn't have two other people with you. Right. Yeah, but this is my sister. She know them. Na- can you scan green <laughs> or can you not? And that's it. And you didn't want to be that nigga that pushed nobody. You didn't want to be like you didn't want to fuck up what we were built. What you we didn't had want to do that. You, you didn't want to be, be that guy. guy. You didn't want. It to be was that guy. wild. And then the other thing was, mm-hmm. and it was related to your area. We moved the podcast stage. Yes. Down. Yes. Because it was all the way up at the top of the hill. If yes. anyone's familiar with the man center, yes. with, with how it is, they're yes. all the way at the top. We moved that so that more people could be there. Yes. So that more people could experience the podcast stage. Yeah. Love what you did. I mean, I just want to shout out World Series of Spades Thank you, live man, because it. the tournament means a lot. Thank um, you. For, for for us, for Roots Picnic, for black culture, um, along with University of Dope. I want to yes, shout them out yes, too. Yes. Um, I love that live gaming experience. I think it adds a lot to the picnic and it's something that I think we need to figure out ways to expand on, on other festivals and things like that. Here's, without me shooting my shot, right? I, <laughs> but no, hear me out. I do think with the live gaming experience, and, this, mm-hmm. and I'm not just talking about with the World Series Space and University sure. of Dope, be anybody, right? What people need sometimes is there's a, like, there's a time when you get to the festival and there's like a break between where maybe you might not want to see this person, this person, yep. this person, or that. Yep. What else is there to do, right? Yep. And I think you guys have cornered the market and saying, okay, like we got this now going on too. And I think the way that we're going to either take it, take it a step further. I'm gonna tell you this now. My idea is I gotta get to. I got it. We got I got the way y'all booked the Roots picnic. The same way I got to book the yeah. World Series of Space. Yep. Like, I need a headlining match. I need to start reaching yep. out to folks and saying, okay, do you want to do the Roots Picnic? Ah, you ain't singing, you ain't rapping, you ain't telling no jokes. But guess what? You and your partner get to play spades. We'll pay you to be... Well, and story, we'll get you yeah. gold VIP we'll get wristbands. You, you can, we so got you. Can, you. You can go green. You can do whatever. You yep. can go green. <laughs> so, I mean, but I think the live gaming experience... Yep. Adds to the just to the fact that there's other things to do. I love it. I and love that's, it. That's thank you for having us, man. We really love that it. idea for the headlining match too. Just to add because we can make that its own that's draw to, as well. Exactly. And I, I'm, I'm with that. So I'm let, with that let's let's keep talking though. Yeah. So let's talk about festivals in general. Yes. All right. So 
I'm going to talk about one more thing about the roots picnic, and it's going to lead into the actual topic where I want to talk about festivals and booking and stuff like that. Sure, sure, sure. During Usher's set, his DJ was cutting up, I guess, throwaway songs that Usher didn't need to perform. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking like Usher, hard Usher joints. Like he, I need a girl part one, and you, you make me like there was some. He had some some bangers that he was just (laughs) take that Usher's Usher doing an outfit change. But he, the DJ is taking, got some, some, some bangers. In the middle of that, though, he ran it and he said, yo, man, I don't give a fuck what none of y'all talking about. Usher is the king of R&B. Mm-hmm. And as I'm watching the show, mm-hmm. I had an epitome. Yeah, go for it. Yo, Usher, your DJ not wrong. Usher's the king of R&B. I don't, I, I, like, now, I know what's, what's going to be said, right? That there's going to be there's the niggas going to tell me there's a guy locked up in Chicago in, in Illinois who can make the same case. We don't even talk about him, right? But if I'm what I saw on stage, and I want to get your perspective, and yep. then I want to talk about because like that was the craziest pivot I've ever seen, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody, there's no diss to Diddy. We love Diddy. This is a Diddy love. We love Diddy on this podcast. We don't revolt. Take that. Yeah, yeah, right. But Diddy drops out. You you get you get this guy. Like, we yeah. we talking about, and when I'm watching him perform, I'm like, damn, this nigga might be the kid. Like, and I'm, when I say might be, I'm not saying it in the sense where I don't agree. I'm sitting there saying to myself, mm-hmm. I'm witnessing mm-hmm. this, right? This guy, I've never seen somebody so fucking professional. This guy is the constant, like, what I watched on stage, if I had any doubt, like, you know how, like, you know, Michael Jordan be like, oh, I don't know who's better, Michael Jordan or this person. <laughs> it is like, I remember he said, look, man. Clyde Drexler was dope in, in 92. I'm not taking... But I t- that's disrespectful to you comparing me to some fucking Clyde Drexler. And he went out there and he proved it. And I say that to say, if you are comparing Usher to anybody, nigga, what I saw... Yeah. I, you you got to go through different factors. You got to yeah. go through different factors. Yeah. It's got to be performance. It's got to be music. It's yes. got to be catalog. What so box I, doesn't he check? So I went to his residency. I think sometimes, you know, there are certain artists yeah, yeah. like an Usher. Yeah. Where if you don't hear them for a while, you, yeah. you kind of forget yeah. how many fucking yeah. hits they have. Yeah. yeah. Dog. Usher yes. can rattle, like can go hit, yes. can give you 20 straight. Easily. Off the top of, off, he can give you eight off one album by itself. Off one album by itself. He can give you a whole album if you're talking about confessions. If we, give, listen, if we want to talk about it. Bro, I was sitting there watching. He performed. He started off, or he started with, with like, not started, but like caught up was like the. Yeah. Pete niggas don't forget. That wasn't a single, if I'm no, not mistaken. No. And neither was Superstar. No. Like, <laughs> they're just hits. They're not <laughs> singles, dog. So, and I, and, and I say that, I'm just sitting there and I'm watching this and I'm like, I've been awe. Usher is the king of R&B. I will say this on this podcast. So and you, I hear you. I hear you. No, there's t- a guy. Say, say what you talk your shit. There's a guy in jail that people like to talk about. Yes. I will argue yes. that a lot of his songs sound the same. Ooh. I will argue that you there's a tonality and there's even with the songs that he's written for mm-hmm. others, you know that that guy wrote that song. Usher's songs, You Make Me Wanna, doesn't sound like Nice and Slow, which doesn't sound like Caught Up, which doesn't sound like Superstar, which doesn't sound like Confessions, which doesn't sound like You Remind Me, which doesn't sound like My Way, which doesn't sound like each and every other song. Usher is the king of R&B. And this is me, and I got to look at camera too. This is me saying it. Usher is the king of R&B. And you can now, I'll take the DMs and I can get cussed out or we can get <laughs> argued about or whatever, whatever. I'm telling you what I know. If you went to his residency, if you were there at the Roots Picnic, if you've seen this man live, you can, I, I can argue there's no R&B singer ma- with lack of controversy. Like, again, you got to go through factors. No, no, zero controversy. I mean, except for some little, little shit. But little shit. Little shit. But I mean, it ain't. What he others hasn't, have gone he through. He hasn't terrorized black the black community. Correct, correct. He's not. Chris, he's not going to be arrested for anything he's ever done. Correct. He's cheated. You can't get arrested for that. Correct. I mean, we don't know that, but I mean, we don't know. Usher, you get bitches. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, you make me want. Yeah, no, right? you get bitches. I mean, <laughs> like it is what it is. Keep it yeah, yeah. Um, that I have to. You got to go through performance. Yeah. Times songs. Times the amount of hits that he. Ha- you can't tell me who's better. Who's better. Who's better? Bro, you know, I'm sitting there as you ranting and I'm 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 listening to you and I'm sitting here like, bro, 
the only person in R and B that I think is better than Usher is not alive, and that's Marvin Gaye. Mm-hmm. There you go. Now, and be clear, when I say king of R and B, I mean alive. Yeah, I just no, want no, let me no, let I me mean, make look, that clear. You are the king. You are alive. You, yeah, you can't be the king. You can't be the king. Correct. Like, I mean, All right, Michael Jackson clarity. is the king of pop, but hey, man, there might be a new throne. I don't know. But right. The point I'm making is, is that I, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to it, and I'm like, Usher is a top five R and B artist all time. I think. You know, the only thing that separates him and, and the guy in Illinois is is the pen, right? But it's like, is yeah. that Usher's fault, right? Like, we're just talking about, our, like, let's be real, right? Like, I, I understand R. Kelly. We, I, I don't take away from his genius, Never. right? I don't take away from his genius. He has about, he has, we equate championship rings to classic albums that are the same thing. I say R. Kelly has three rings, probably four, right? Three for sure. I know that for mm-hmm. the f- 12, mm-hmm. 12, 12. Nigga, yeah, TP two is crazy. TP two, right. no, no, hold on. <laughs> like, I know we talking TP2. shit about no, no, no. This. I ain't talking shit about nobody. No, no, no. TP two. Just... I was thought I, I, I sang. I'm an Aquarius. I'll be like, I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm an Aquarius. And it's Sanja Do I remember yeah. that? Yeah. Tw- TP two was crazy, and then Chocolate Factory, right? So right. That's that's three. Um, you can make a case for maybe the R album. I don't know, right? Um, Usher has two rings. Usher has eighty seven oh one, and he has Confessions. But R. Kelly in his library doesn't have. I don't think Usher has more than three rings. I think two is. is I don't. It, so you're talking about classic albums his, as rings. His, yeah. So his. So I'll say this. And I think my way. I don't think it's a classic album, even though we're celebrating the twenty five years of it. I think it was a finals appearance. I think that's what I was going to say. I think my way came and it it made us feel like okay, like th- I didn't know what was to come. Right, like it was like Usher, like he he hit when he was like when he was like fourteen or whatever. Grows up like one thing that we could always respect about Usher, and I like what I like about his voice was Usher always sound grown Mm -hmm. since he was since he was yeah he always sound. But I'm just saying Usher has two rings, but nobody had he arguably has the best album in history. Yes, so that's what I was going to say. He can say he can make a strong case for saying I have the best album in music. Not- so you can say R might have three championships. Yes. But does Usher have the greatest championship you've ever he has, seen? He has, Did he go four, four, see, four? There's not a big difference between two and three to me either. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like it ain't like Usher got two rings and then nothing else. He got right. two rings and a slew of other like a slew of finals appearances. Yeah, a slew of other shit. You know what I'm saying? R. Kelly has but so the point is Usher saying he's the king of R and B. I'm not mad at that definitive statement and I'm not mad at you what you just a a fact that you just brought up where you say a lot of R. Kelly stuff sound the same I don't disagree with that Mm -hmm. I don't Usher gives you different vibes different sounds and I again I I don't disagree with that I don't disagree with that I look at the totality of of an artist too Usher has done film Usher's done investments Usher's done the voice Usher's done you know you look at very marketable he's very marketable and very very, everyone everyone knows him can I ask a question? Yeah. Is there anybody who doesn't like Usher? And I'm not talking about as a, like, I'm not talking about musically, just musically, right? Yeah. Like, can anybody, and I'm not, like, look, I don't know Usher personally, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure there's a nigga like, no, nah, man, fuck that nigga, like, right? But from what we know about Usher, like, Usher doesn't seem like the guy, if I saw him on the street, yo, bro, I'm a big fan, can you take a picture with me? I believe he'll stop. I don't believe R. Kelly would. No. And Usher may not take the picture with you, right. but he'll give you like no, I'm rushing to a I'm meeting, rushing, but yeah, thank but you. He'll, he'll acknowledge he'll you. He'll acknowledge you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, good brother. Thank I appreciate you. you. you thank know what I'm you. Saying? Yeah, that's, he's a good man. That's a, he's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. Right. So it's like, yeah, nah. Everything you said is is, and I know being a good guy that means nothing in music for the most part, but <laughs> but it, it carries you for a long for, way. for 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 long term. Yes, long career. Yes. That does matter. At least yes. the image. Yes, I of agree. It matters. I agree with that. I agree with that. Because for a while, I agree with that. We said Chris Brown might have been, could have been, yeah. could have been, but because, but of, because yeah. of other stuff that has nothing to do with music. You, 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 yeah. Because let's be real, right? If I had a, if let's just say I got a show, right, and you know, I got the budget to let's say Usher plays Spades, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. I'm such a fan, and because I'm just like, yo, I don't like. He seems like a nice guy. I'm not saying I'm throwing because it ain't about the bag, right? But I would jump. I would jump at the chance mm. to have him on the show because, like, somebody like that can never be broke. Somebody's no. always going to book him. Always. always, 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 always. But look at what he's done. Look at how he's yeah. transformed yeah. 
a Las Vegas residency. It's it's, it's the thing it's to go to. It's a different standard now. It's a different standard now. I don't want to hear... Now, that's a, that, I'm glad you said that. Because now, when you do a Las Vegas residency, I don't want to hear, right, about some nigga with three or four hits doing a Las Vegas no. residency. I don't want... Like, you... You also don't want to hear about the Wayne Newtons. Like, you don't yeah. want an old just, yeah, like you know, Donnie going off Marie of the... Osmond. No, you want someone that's hot, like Fresh. a great performer. And so many... Yeah. So many people have gone to that. Yeah, no, residency. everybody is going to that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody. flown out. Yeah. Gr- five girlfriends at a time. Yeah, yeah, five. Yo, you ain't like... He break... Yo, he make the women fly out. Fly out. Fellas, you maybe you like, let me <laughs> make the women fly out. That's, that's crazy when you think about it. Like imagine, like I'm a, like if I was a thirty something year old single guy by myself, I go to Vegas for an Usher concert. Yo, I can fuck around. I can leave with something. You can leave with something. You're gonna leave with something. I'm that's from, a good gamble. I'm if from you will. around the way, dog. Yeah. I'm. You gonna leave with something? That's lit, yo. You gonna leave with something? Damn. Okay. Now let me ask you this, right? Yeah. When you guys made the switch, well, when Diddy, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. what was the feeling when y'all finally got Usher was confirmed? And what, Man. You knew what it was going to do. Man, I got the call, um, mm-hmm. you know, the president of Live Nation Urban, okay. uh, Sean G. Sean was G. really instrumental in, mm-hmm. in leading that. He called me like, we got him. And I was like, <sighs> no. I was like, for real? This late? He was like, we got him. I said, all right, the city's going to go absolutely bonkers crazy yeah when we announced usher i said you sure he said we got him and we announced it and i remember the amount of calls from people who remembered who i was and said hey long time (laughs) you got any comp tickets to the thing i said no go to my brother you gotta get your own yeah it was niggas i was like come on bro you're a grown man You you know yeah um it was an amazing feeling because I knew because I had seen the residency. Yeah, I knew what he was going to do and what he was going to bring to Philly, and he delivered. Like to your point, he was going. He was the DJ was just going through hits. Throw away shit. Hits. Uh, I ain't never seen no shit like that. Yo. Like he was, <laughs> the DJ was throwing away. I'm like, like it was what? a track three on a third yeah, album. Tell like it, nigga, get your ass back out here and perform <laughs> this right. And then him with the Roots band, yo. You can't beat that. Now Usher had been so. Usher was at the Roots Picnic. It was 2016. Yes, he was. Yes, he 2016, was. 2017. I think it was 2016. Mm. This is pre-residency, Usher. Mm-hmm. You know, still great. Yeah. Still hits. Still got hits, yeah. But, but to perfect that live show that he's done in yeah. at Vegas and yeah. then to come back to yeah. Philly. Yeah. It was... So can I ask... Am I allowed to ask this, right? Go for it. If Usher is unavailable, who were three other artists you could have gotten? That's what I want to know. If, if, we're about, if I'm allowed to ask that... Let me know. Other than Usher, I don't know who we could have gotten, right? Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I'll say that we That's reached the safe out. Answer, y'all, by the way. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, nigga, Usher, if you ain't calling it, we we had Beyonce on speed dial. Right? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Hey, yeah, you don't have to call. No, <laughs> you uh, don't have to call. That's no, funny. no, uh, no. But it was, you know, we had reached out to the J Coles of the world, uh, the Tyler, the creators of the world. Like we're the goal again for Roots Picnic is mm-hmm. black culture, but really having like those strong, strong yeah. headliners. Yeah. Um, to do it, and yeah. so we were reaching out to strong, strong, strong like A list, no, yeah, nothing like listen. especially if we were canceling you know, or, or trying to switch over so late, yeah, because you're switching Diddy, right? Yeah. We're talking about an A list type, you, you know, he closes the festival, you know, right, everywhere, unless, right? You know, it's very, you know, he's not many people that's, that's going after him, right? You know what I'm saying, and so for for us, mm-hmm. it just had to ma- it had to be that caliber of, mm-hmm. of artists, and so we reached out to a, a few people, and we're just super blessed yeah. and fortunate that we were able to get Usher. So many thanks to Usher and his mm-hmm. team mm-hmm. Uh, for making that happen. So let me ask you this, right? And I'm gonna let's now let's talk about festivals in general, right? Yeah. I don't know if people really know what goes into. Not, not, and here's the thing: we can talk about all the other things sure. that go into a festival, right? And I'm talking <clears> security, <throat> insurance. Sure ambulance police like there's a lot that got to be accounted for like even if i remember like you know at the at the roots picnic i think doors didn't open because there was a small situation if i'm not mistaken correct okay so yeah so you know like things that you just don't know about Mm -hmm. like you gotta you know what i'm saying so i say all that to say but let's just talk artists in general right Mm -hmm. when we're booking we're booking a roots so we're gonna call this this show right clint and Brandon's festival. Let's do it, CB. All right. All right. So, we're, what do you want to? What are we going to call this festival? 
dickheads from Philly Fest. D- dickheads? <laughs> I don't think anybody performing on that joint. You know nah, nah, nah. But, but just just make up a name. We all just right, call it. Right, so we'll do we'll do we'll do we'll do B B and C Fest. B C F. Uh, well, see, that's too much like Broccoli City. I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you're right. All right. C B C B C B Fest. C B. All right. So we got C B C B Festival. All right. Now, first. All right. Now, the first question is, all right. Yeah. What are we doing at this festival, right? Because every festival, like, I think the Roots Picnic are the only ones who have podcasts. One of the few. I don't think they, there's not many festivals that have one podcasts. One of the very few. Yeah. So, do we want podcasts at this festival? I want comedians. That's, see, this. He wants comedians at this festival. Yeah. All right. So, you got to think about this. So, first things first, because it's our festival, you yeah. got to think about what's important to us right. and you know you are an amazing comedian so you have to represent the craft that you've built so that's, that's real. one that's real okay who else we getting i mean you gotta have music <laughs> he said i mean you gotta have music i mean <laughs> <laughs> but okay but let's 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 now let's narrow it down though right what type of music um it depends on what we're going for right like if yeah. it's our you know if it's our festival <sighs> That's tough. I mean, we want, do you want younger? Do you want older? Like, what's the, the okay, question I would wait, ask, mm. what's the demographic you're trying to reach with right, this so from, festival? For, Clint, for, for the C and CB festival, mm-hmm. I need, my target demographic audience is 30 to 50. Okay. 30 to 50 men and women. Okay. Black or white. Mm. Black mm. or white. Okay. But the the type of white person that would be at this festival. That's my question. Is it the white person who happens to live next to a lot of black people at 13th of Wyoming? Or is it the white person that lives on the main line? And I'm using Philadelphia, yeah, Greater yeah, yeah, Philadelphia yeah. No, region. It's the white references. person who it's like a bunch of it's like it's like like Justin Timberlake white people. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, okay. We're not saying you woke. You know, you don't you don't gotta be woke. Right. But it's like you're not uncomfortable around black people. That means that Justin would potentially be on this festival. Justin might be here. Yeah. Justin might be on the festival. Shit. Let's keep it a buck. NSYNC might be on the fucking festival. And I'll be there. I would definitely be there. <laughs> and I'll be there. I and, and and let's be real. If NSYNC is doing this festival, nigga, they not going first. No. Which means they're late at night. Which means I would like how many black people do you believe would stick around to see NSYNC? I a few more than you think, more than you think would stick around to see in sync at the end of that festival. I promise you they would. And know the songs. And know the songs. Baby, you're yeah. gone. I know that shit. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> so, okay, we got 30 to 50 men mm-hmm. and women. So here's the, the black. And all other, and other, and other, and uh, other. Uh, don't, 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 we don't, we don't yeah, give anybody. Yeah, everybody, yeah. So, so. Like, I want my festival to look like that. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I want like, no, but think about it. If you look at, that's a random, if you don't know what the motherfuckers played music the other, that's a random ass fucking picture. <laughs> So, <laughs> so no, I'm with you. I'm with Shout you. Shout out to Sid and Steve. So, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. You know what's so crazy? One of my, you know, just mentors in this, who's actually been the Roots tour manager mm. um, since forever, since way before I started. Tina Ferris is also mm. the tour manager for Steve Lacey Hilarious. for Sid. Hilarious. You know what I mean? Was for the internet. So shout out to shout out to Tina Ferris. Shout out to Tina. Um, you know, who's just incredible and the team that she has built. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm shouting out because no, this team mm-hmm. worked on works on the Roots Picnics. I got shout out to Sierra Anderson, Jessica Alney, like just the team, the team mm. of women. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of that, yeah, man. And even Kristen and her team. Oh, A- shout out to Kristen. Yeah. I didn't even, I was like, Kristen, you own this company? She was like, I'm like, oh, I, I, I mean, I've known Kristen for a very long time yeah. and it's really good to see her like, and and then you know what's crazy too, like, and I'm sorry to not to get personal on this or podcast or anything, but it's really good to see people that you grew up with and came up with and known for a very, very That's long time. Is now we're on the same level. We're doing we're doing amazing. Yep, we're thing. on the same festival together. Yes, helping it's a big helping deal. the run. That's it's awesome. Big deal. So boom, we're in this festival. So mm-hmm. here's this here's the B in the CB festival. My job and mm-hmm. part of my role mm-hmm. is to just make sure that we execute the C's vision. Right. Because you're coming to the you're coming saying, look, let's make this festival together. So we're in a co-promotion deal. So this deal is Live Nation's coming to help 
fund your idea as long as the idea makes fiscal sense. So yes. my next question to you is, how large of a festival do you want to make it? Because Coachella yeah. is 100,000 people. Yeah. I would tell you, hell no. We're not there yet. Well, yeah. We shouldn't even, we're we not shouldn't even, even think. think we're not even that. thinking. No. True story. The first year of the Roots Picnic, 2,500 people. I, no, no, no. I, I believe that, though. 2,500 It was down by the... Um, festival Pier, down by Delaware F. Yeah. Or Christopher Columbus Boulevard. That's where I would have Yeah. It. So, That's where Festival I Pier. Yeah, I, I mean... 5,000 is the maximum. Mm -hmm. 5,000, 5,000. 5,000. Smart. And that's and it gives you an opportunity to grow it. It gives you an opportunity to scale the festival. That's yeah, that's 5, important. 5,000 max. Yep. 5K max. Yep. Okay. 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 Now, you're only getting 5,000 people. So remember when you said in sync? Yeah, we ain't getting in sync. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. You're not getting in sync. You're not getting in sync. <laughs> We're not getting in sync. No. No. This is one of those where I would, if I could get it in sync, right, I would have to really have a like I have to it would have to be like Clint you know all them niggas and they all them are doing you a solid ad like you saved everybody in that group's life <laughs> yep and and their manager's life for them to even be okay with this or yeah or or you have the greatest relationship ever with a Pepsi Ooh, or yeah, a yeah. Spo any so sponsors yes brand part someone is like you know what Clint yeah this is only 5,000 people but I fuck with you so much I'm gonna give you a million dollars to do this festival that's another piece of festivals that people yes. I just t think take for granted listen sponsorships I saw that I think the main sponsor on the Roots Picnic this year was Chase one of the main sponsors one of they were one I don't want to say every one, one of them but they were them Dunkin Donuts like I, rem I just remember Chase <laughs> Dunkin Donuts <laughs> <laughs> we can't laugh about it not tell the story so <laughs> real quick y'all yes please can we talk about <laughs> my good friend Clint Coley and Duncan who again, <laughs> no let, please let me start the story no fuck that I'm telling the story I gotta look at the camera <laughs> Brandon Panky who yes. really believes in Clint Coley as a comedian yes. as an entertainer yes said to himself hey we're doing a brunch a morning so just so I can define what a brunch is, just for people that don't know, a brunch <laughs> takes place generally between 10 a.m., 11 a.m., whether you're on East Coast time, Pacific time, Central time, and ends around 2 p.m. So it's early. The sun is out. Sometimes the roosters may still be crowing. I don't know how it works. Yes. So a brunch yes. at Punchline Philly. Shout out to Punchline Philly, yes. one of the great, um, you know, clubs. Gave me a for... residency throughout the month of yes. May in Philly. Like, they, yes. looked out, they looked out for me. Yes. Yeah, shout yes. out to Amanda and Rachel for sure. Amazing. Clint had a residency, so I said, you know what? I need to bring Clint back to the punchline for brunch. This is great. Dunkin' Donuts. So let me explain what Dunkin' Donuts is. Dunkin' Dunkin'. Dunkin'. Everything runs on Dunkin'. Everything. Not everything, though. No. Not, you know, late night. Anything you do late night doesn't run on Dunkin'. But morning shit. But we're in the morning, and it's brunch. Shout out to Food Chasers, too, for being our, our, our caterer. So I say... That shrimp and grits was crazy, yeah. Shout out. So I say to Clint, Clint, hey, sir. Hey, you're gonna be at the World Series, and I did it in my. I'm light skinned, nerdy. Hey, 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 Clint, you're you're gonna be at the Roots Picnic. You're yeah. gonna be World Series of Spades. Yeah. Uh, why don't you do some comedy for us at 11 a.m.? And Clint said, "Cool, cool." So we bring out, we come out, introduce. I had lost my voice from the night before. I had introduced Clint. I said, "Clint, give it up, Clint, Co World Series of Spades creator, Clint Coley." Crowd's going quick. Crowd's going quick. So it's 11 a.m. I just want to emphasize this. It's 11 a.m. and the sponsor is Duncan. The sponsor is not Ciroc. The sponsor is not, you know, filling up uh, Jim Beam. No, the sponsor is Duncan fucking Donuts. Munchkins Duncan. <laughs> and I hear dildos and child pornography. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't say that. <laughs> it was that way. <laughs> Anyway. I hear no because we got no. I, I'm just going off of buzzwords. Yeah. I just got to go off of buzzwords. I, child porn. I said child. <laughs> you porn. said the word child. Porn. It wasn't joke, talking about wasn't, it. Wasn't it wasn't. Yeah, but I just but I got to go off of buzzwords, Clint. Right. Because here's the thing: yeah. Duncan wasn't listening for your actual joke. They heard words, and Duncan looked fucking mortified. Mortified. They were like, who? <laughs> Mind you, Duncan Donuts that gave me my own motherfucking donuts with Yo, my face on it. <laughs> now, in in my defense. <laughs> I didn't know Dunkin' Donuts was the main sponsor of this until I got there, right? Then in my, I'm sitting there saying, I'm like, I mean, I'm like, it's a comedy club. Nigga, I'm going to do my set. You're going to do your set and at 11 a.m. it wasn't that it wasn't funny. I was getting, like, niggas it, was laughing. It, it, it was just like, they was, people were laughing. It was like, 
I had just said. I, I was like, I take dick pics. Niggas looking like. It. Oh. Because I had just said, oh, y'all don't even going to pray over your food. Like, it's Sunday. And that's the other thing. It wasn't Saturday brunch. Sunday, Sunday. It was Sunday morning to the to my people, to my black folk, to my religious black folk, I, to my I, people I, that love the Lord. It was a great set. Just, just wasn't the set for the time that um, we had it. Just, the moral of the story is, <laughs> don't upset nobody's sponsor. All right? Don't fuck with the sponsor. Because see now, no, but to that point, and we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Sponsors are very finicky. Sponsors, especially for black yes. oriented yes. events. They always want to be a part of it because we do the cool shit. Yeah. So it's always important to make sure that they're good. Yeah. You know, what I argued and what I argued to the sponsor, just so you know, you don't know anything about it, I said, look, we're not going to not be authentic in what we do. Right. If Clint want to go up there and talk about dick pics and dildos, that's authentic to what we're doing. And I had your back and I had the back of what we were doing because ultimately you can't, if you're a comedian, your truth comes out in, yeah. in what you say. Yeah. And I believe that just in general. This is now becoming a general thing. So I'm not, I was in that moment like, oh shit, like, yeah. oh shit. But I left there and I was just like, but you know what though? Also, sometimes comedians go out there with the ill intent of trying to. Yeah. Piss people. That wasn't my intent. I know that. Yeah, like, I, know I, was that. I know your heart, bro. I was, I was drinking. I was, but I'm well, not even, but I had a good time. Everyone had a good time. Yeah, I was a good time. It was just my, my, my homegirl was there though. Uh, that I didn't know my homegirl the next she was like she was like yo I, she's like Clint I seen you said before I love you she's like but I just don't know about dick and take <laughs> no one did that's all she said was it was cool so but it, I mean it worked out man um but I, but I say that to say I thought Chase was one of the sponsors but yeah. I was like somebody made a joke was somebody's like man Chase got money nah nigga Chase is money right Chase is money man, Chase is money dog so the point I'm making is though is like you know and not to take the heat off me right I did what I did said what I said but it wasn't a career it's not career no. suicide, you know. No. You know what I mean? Like he here, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's not career suicide. It's no, like, it's like we watching you though, nigga. We gotta, <laughs> now, we, now I took my notes. We, I got, said, we got our eye on you. Now friend. it's the late night brunch, the midnight brunch yeah, that all. we bring Don't you to. That's be, all. Yeah, you might you might want to get somebody else next year for, yeah. <laughs> for daytime. <laughs> now, I mean, anyway, but the whole point is okay. So we, we could get a sponsor. Let's just say we let's say we do have a sponsor. Yeah. But we don't get a million dollars. How much do you think we're going to need just for what pays for like the talent and all the other stuff? Well, it's not just talent because we yeah, got to no, no, pay no. for it. Yeah. You got to pay for insurance. You got to pay for St- well, staging, lighting, yes. uh, audio. Yes. I mean, this festival and it, it, see, you're, you're asking, this is like a rough question because we don't know. Yeah. We don't know how long the festival is. We don't know how many so acts thinking, we have. We're thinking, because see, if we got comedians, it got to be a two day thing. One day comedians, one day. Music. So we're starting with a two day festival. Then now we should. The soon first as you say, time, as soon as you say it like that, it should be one day. The first time again, and this is where you right though, for those right. that want to enter into this space. Yeah, it's a very um, crowded space. Yeah, it is crowded. Yeah. Yes, Bonnaroo's, Lollapalooza's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Roots picnics of the world. But then there's also a bunch of new festivals that just pop up. Yep, and you year. might get a hit like Lovers and Friends. Yeah, crazy. You might get a hit. But there's a bunch that you heard of yeah. one year yeah. and, and never heard of them again. That's real. And that's because they want to, oh, well, this person's doing 25000 We can do 5000 for two days. You can't. You can't because nobody knows or trusts your brand yet. And that's hard. Yeah. That's very hard. First of all, y'all just moved to two days. You just moved to two days. After like 12 days. years. Like, yeah. Like last year, I think was the first time it was two yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. The Roots picnic was never two days. We don't do two. We didn't do it. And then we grew it and said, you know, we can do two days. And we felt comfortable doing that because we had established a brand, a brand. over yeah. 15, 16 years. Yeah, facts. facts. So, facts. and know your market. What city is this in? That's a good question, man. Know your market. That's a good question. I don't want to do it in Philly. If Smart. I would do this, just because it's just Philly has too much now. We already have the Roots picnic in Made in America what by else? itself. What do you? What else do you need? What I, we already have the Roots in Made in America. There's, there's, and there's no other festival mm-hmm. at any other time of the year that you could put on. At you know because of how it's cold. Yep. And let's be real, y'all. And I don't think y'all again, y'all don't know your market. But like, yo, during the winter seasons and stuff like when the Eagles are good, they take over the city. Oh yeah, I ain't going to no festival. <laughs> like <I'm, laughs> they take over the city. Um, I would put this somewhere in like a. I put this in like a in like a I put it in like a I put it in like a sh- summertime Chicago. All right, so I got a twist for you. Talk to me. I would if I were planning a festival today. Be okay. 
I wouldn't choose any Philly, Chicago, any New major York. City. No A markets. I would do because if you look at Dreamville, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, it was the J. Cole connection and it was Raleigh, North Carolina. But Raleigh ain't had nothing else to do, so they can pack they it. They can pack it out, yeah. You go to Birmingham, yeah, Jacksonville, yeah, yeah. one of them tertiary yeah. markets that they, 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 they feel like, yo, you don't come here. Right. Scottsdale, Arizona, something else that's not the main city that's and bring idea. it there. And now you're driving people from these major cities. Like, I got to go to this. You know what I mean? It becomes a des- now it becomes a destination because there's nothing really else there. South by Southwest really because nobody. I, I'm gonna tell you this before South by Southwest. You know what Austin? I gave no fucks about Austin at all. That's actually not a bad idea. If that's the case, I would do something like a. That's a good damn. I would do something like a. I would put it in Ohio. Okay. I put it in Ohio. I okay. Put it like right, right between like Cincinnati and like Indi- mm-hmm. Indianapolis, like an hour drive. It's like. That area, Cincinnati, mm-hmm. like right outside. All summertime right, so Cincinnati, Cincinnati. So Cincinnati. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so we, Cincinnati. We Cincinnati. And it's beautiful too, because where did uh where did Dave have his uh like comedy retreats? It was comedy joints. So he's at, he's out Dave is out by I don't know what part I don't know exactly what part of Ohio he lives but, in. But 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 I know his it's out there. So we so me and DL did a show, I think it was either Dayton or Toledo. Mm-hmm. We're there, Dave shows up, right? And then afterwards, we went. There's a, he has the speakeasy. Like it was, it was a whole experience. It's yeah. a whole another story. The point I'm making is, is that though, I believe Dave is somewhere out there, like like Youngstown, like outside of like to, yeah. Toledo. But, but, yeah. but let's think psychologically. All I know is some people know it's in Ohio. Yeah. So now when we're talking about music and comedy, like, oh, I wonder. I wonder. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. Like, yo, yeah, this yeah, shit yeah. is dope. I need to maybe be there. Just think, That's think real. of what people will think of. That's real. That's yeah. real. Okay. So now, so now. The, I don't. I don't want to get into who we're getting, right? Because that's a whole other debate and a yep. whole other joint, right? So we got comedy, we got music. So I think something like this would cost five hundred thousand dollars for one day. Depends again. It depends on what talent you're trying to get. It depends on what you're trying to make. It depends on ticket prices. So a five thousand max festival. What kind? Like for the for this age range, who do you? Who, what kind of headliner are you thinking? What kind of headline? Like somebody in this range. So like, if I'm thinking music. Because you only have to get 5,000 people there. So that's the other piece. Yeah. Don't go over the top Yeah. when you only got to get five. Think about who sells yeah. 5,000 tickets, right? Yeah. Like you don't, that's shit. If I was doing this 5,000, like from a. A music artist that can sell 5,000 tickets. Well, you don't need to. Here's the thing. You don't need one person to no, sell 5,000 tickets. Seven, seven to 10 people to do that. So you don't have, again, you don't have to get the person that can sell out 5,000. You get the person that sells out 2,000. And then somebody else that sells out 2,000 or And then 1, another person that sells out 300. And, it, and then all of a sudden, you yeah. got your, you got your people. Now, you were talking about two days. We're not talking about two no, days. No, we're not so, talking about two days. No. Who would I get? Don't do that. Don't put me on the spot with this no, one. No, who no, would no. I get? I got somebody. Who 5,000. Music, prices? 30 to 50. Man, I'm getting... I'm I'm calling the snowman. You calling Jeezy? I'm calling the snowman. Cult following. He can... He's your headliner? I mean, for a 5,000... Shout out to Jeezy. Jeezy, actually, fun story. I'm in one of his... I forget which album, but I have a thank you in one of Jeezy's albums. Do you? I helped, yeah, I helped out. With, That's helped fucking hilarious. Out That's hilarious. But shout out no, to you Jeezy. No, you had to... Because you, you know who used to work with... Uh, G, we'll talk about it off camera. You know uh, Shauna. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's G, okay. but, but I didn't know her. Okay, at that you didn't point. know her. At the time. Yeah, nah, I, I know, know she's like she when we used to share yeah. off. Like she told me, she she's very instrumental in that snowman. Yes, yes. super instrumental. Very yeah. super instrumental. Shout out to her. Shout out to Love strength Ashana, of a woman. Ayer, strength of a woman. Yes, yeah, strength. Shout out all that. Yes. Yeah. All right. But you also need a name <clears throat> again, and you, I think about the totality of a festival. Yeah. Right when you're thinking about headliners, who does? Amex or Pepsi also know, right? Mm. That Pepsi exec may not necessarily, you know, Jeezy Jeezy at the headliner, like, or, oh, Mm. what type of festival if this is Jeezy is the headliner? It may not. So you have to also have to think about that. I think, again, I just think about You think about everything. This is is how festivals, see, here's the thing though, right? And this is where I'm not, like, I'm looking at it from just a fan. and Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? But this is the business side that people really need to Mm -hmm. hear, right? Like, people will always ask, well, like, why is this person doing it? And that's like, Yo, Chase knows who the fuck Usher is. Chase knows who Usher Chase is. knows who the fuck Diddy is. Chase knows who Miss Lauren Hill is. Chase, yes. Chase knows that. Chase knows them. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, and Dunkin' Donuts. Mm-hmm. So, okay. 
So who is our sponsor? That's the question. <laughs> New festival in Cincinnati. So I would tap in. So this this is something we've done. And shout mm-hmm. out to visit Philly and in, in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. But that Cincinnati Tourism Board because Cincinnati doesn't get a lot of these. So Cincinnati's Board of Tourism or Tourism, you know, board are gonna be like, wait, 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 wait. You're bringing people to our city. We're gonna give you some money for this as well. So that's one of them. That's a low. That's a low lift. That's a low lift. I'm wow. giving some some secrets right. That now. is a secret because that sounds like Philly gives 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 some money. Philly because they know money the, the and city support, yeah, which is also important, and you know travel packages yeah. and all that. Yeah. You know, they give, they support, yeah. right, and that's, that's a big and, deal. It's a huge deal. It's a big deal. Um, man, you got me. I got to think on that. You got this. Is this is not it? I don't. I, don't, I mean, I'm just I don't get no on my secrets. Wall. I'm, I'm looking too. It's like Jasmine's too big. Justin's too big. Scissors too big. Isn't that something? Like they're all too big. Hers too big. She can do her own shit. At least she keeps. But well, she does do her own yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. She that's the point. Yeah, she does her own shit. Shit. What? When I, is this? When does this get released? Uh, I was gonna put this episode. I, I'm dating it. Uh, I normally do, so I was gonna have the guy that the Tiny Desk episode. So if y'all listen to this. We already the Tiny Desk episode already came out. We next. This is next. So what day? Because like, the reason I'm saying that is lights on may have already been announced. When is lights on being announced? Monday. So no, it's been announced already. No, oh. no, no, no. Well, by the time this comes out, so this is Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday is getting announced Tuesday on, on her birthday. On her birthday. Okay, so if that's the case, yeah, it's been announced. Okay, it's been announced. Okay. Okay, so lights on. But fe- her is doing lights. On her fe- is doing lights on festival this year it in the Bay Area. On. It is lights on. I'm sorry. No, that's all. It. I love it. All right. Um, I can fuck with a Maxwell. You can fuck with a Maxwell. I can fuck with a Ma- Maxwell. There it is. Give me a Maxwell. There it is. Give me a, a Maxwell. There it is. Maxwell can do like I saw him at the Barclays with Nas. I don't know who sold the more tickets. Who gives a fuck, right? right. But I, let's say Barclays hold what twenty five thousand. Holds about twenty thousand. I know for a fact Maxwell was at least responsible for seventy five hundred at least. Maxwell. 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 And then I would do so now that we got the headline and now that I know what the vibes are a little bit, then you can have some fun, right? Like, you know, I always I like the the gospel of it all, right? Yes. Is that like a Thai tribute? Is that like a Kiara sh- share? Is that somebody is that you get a little gospel, you get a gospel, or then you go R and B a little bit more, right? Is mm-hmm. that SWV? Mm-hmm. Is that Drew Hill? Mm-hmm. Is that you know, then you can get then let's throw in let's have Jeezy. Let's, let's have, have some fun. Let's have Jeezy. Let's have Jeezy. Let's, have him. Let's get a couple dope DJs. Let's, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah. Then on the comedian yeah. side, it's your festival. Now on the comedian side, I would that's, that'd be hard, right? When it comes to like who I would get, just because you would be on it. Fuck yeah, it's your festival. Yeah, fuck no, there's no like I would do what J- Black Thought do. Mm-hmm. Like you know how him, he do the JP, he do the mixtape, he do the mixtape. So yep. I would do maybe like I'd be like a I'd do like a Clint Coley and Friends, like you know. Yep. Boom, like. Yep. And that's where I'm introducing maybe some comedians you don't know about. Blah, exactly. Blah, blah. Yeah, I like this. And I think all this, the Roots Picnic is filmed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't see why none of this should be, shouldn't be filmed. Absolutely. We have to. We have to. You also, you always have to get content. That's the new piece of this. You always have to have content because this could be a documentary piece. Agreed. 10 years from now. I agree. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Always. So I want to close out with this, man. Um, and I want to ask you this. Right, so we we you know briefly touched on we could we could do this all day. Yeah, we briefly touched on what a festival takes and stuff like that. Yes, I want to talk about the last thing. I, I got a question for you. Okay. Um, the question I was going to ask you was, as stressful as this job is, mm-hmm. as as hard as you actually work, because I think nobody really knows how hard you work. Um, do you love what you do? Do you wake up every morning? And you, you, you're in, cause like there's, people don't realize there's different facets of the business, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And people just think you just have to be, oh, if I don't become an artist or an entertainer or a singer or something like that, there's no space for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I just want to talk to you, bro. I just want to take real quick, just something as simple as a festival. Mm-hmm. You look at things that I just don't see. Mm-hmm. And that's what artists and other, we need people like you. So I guess my question is, do you love what you do? And what do you see doing? What do you see yourself doing moving forward if you yeah. decide to get to another space? Nah, for sure. Um, so I love what I do. I love the relationships that I've built. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I wouldn't know Clint Coley, mm-hmm. even though we both from Philly, which is wild. But I yeah. wouldn't know Clint Coley if and I have, did. I mean, we have a strong, serious mutual friend. Yeah. Like somebody that I love dearly. Yeah, and like, likewise. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Likewise. So, yeah. um, the relationships that I built through it are, are is something that I just, I, I can't replace that. I can't, um, you know, take for granted. The other piece of this is, and I, and, you know, when thinking about this business, when I was younger, and even damn near probably this year, mm-hmm. I tell interns and I tell younger folk, like, you know, don't be, don't say you're above or not to hand out tickets. Like I I used to give out comp tickets, but I gave out comp tickets to executives, Mm -hmm. CEOs, Mm -hmm. VPs, Mm -hmm. SVPs. And then they became my peers Mm -hmm. and part of my Mm -hmm. ecosystem. And now, you know, these these people are a phone call away from things that Mm -hmm. I want to do. Do I love the live business? I love the fact that from it, I could start my own network, um, Apex. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, let's lead into Apex. I was literally, Apex. you read my mind. Artists presented experiences. And yes. for everyone that doesn't know Apex, go yes. to watchapex.com. Um, Make sure you download it on Apple or Android devices. I have the app. No bullshit. My, my guy. My guy. You ain't. I got the app, motherfucker. Um, Go ahead. It's Netflix for musicians. It's an opportunity for artists to to talk about, you know, whatever. Scripted, unscripted, documentaries, everything. It's for artists. My guy. My guy has that. Let's go, dog. He got we the got, ad. We got the ad. I'm locked in, dog. He we got are, that. I'm locked in, baby. I'm locked in. Um, but that's what I love. I love content, bro. Like, I've always loved content. I love, mm. I you know, growing up, I think we talked about, I, I, I wasn't joking on the text, but, yeah. you know, I looked at, movies like mm-hmm. boomerang mm-hmm. and strictly business mm. I don't know. and it was you know strictly B- business it was wayman he was a but yeah, he, he became a partner in a real estate firm mm-hmm. and this this movie was made in 1991 yep eddie murphy and boomerang marcus graham was a senior vp or yes, vp at a marketing firm yes he was growing up watching those and seeing that you know you could be black and you can be in real estate you can be in marketing you can be and have swag, and have swag with it yeah like marcus was cool that's the shit I want to do. That's the shit I'm in love with and why I, I this business and being able to thrive in it um, is really the blessing for me. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to make sure that I could be a leader and be an executive in this live music space mm-hmm. allowed me to do that and branch out into things that I also mm-hmm. am equally or more passionate about. That's a big deal. Um, and um, I work for an all black company. Yes, you do. I've worked for an all black company since I got out of college, mm-hmm. whether I interned or whether I was working. I've only worked with and for black folk that and to be whoever people think I am these days. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm i blessed. Bro. That's that's damn near just as potent as being at an HBCU working for a yeah. black company, man. For <laughs> yeah. real, for real. Yeah. Um, Look, the link to Apex will be in the description of this episode where you guys can download the app. Thank you. Uh, Apex is, yo, let me tell you, like I said, I have the app. A lot of a lot of dope music content. That's what this is, man. So I'm looking right here. Uh, Joey Badass crowns the best rapper to turn. He is, he's not the best rapper to ever turn active, but the nigga tough. Yeah. Like, let's not, you know what I mean? Like he, Shout he, out to Razor Kane. He, he killing it. He right killing now. it. He's yeah. killing it. But that's neither here nor there, man. But yeah, we're going to have the link to the description and, um, any other, any tell people where they can find you at or anything like that, man? Yeah, I mean, I know I'm going to get some issues over the Ushers, the king of hey, R&B, but I'm nah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know you are, but nah, Brandon underscore Panky. Um, but really, go to, um, you know, make sure you follow watch a- at Watch Apex Now, mm-hmm. um, Instagram, Twitter, all, all the all the social media. It'll be in the description. Yeah, description all of it, too. man. That's what's important, man. Download the app. But thank you, Clint, this platform that you're building for me and for others um, and for yourself just to have fun and, yeah, and talk bro, about shit is, that we don't talk about. That's all I want to do is to talk about shit shit's incredible, man. So Because we would have this conversation behind. Yeah, you're Real talk, yeah. This is just <laughs> us talking. Um, Thanks. Thanks. I like the idea of this though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably take a picture of it. Um, but not, <laughs> but nah. But thank you, thank you for having me. I no doubt, no, man. man. Thank you for coming on. Man. Always, always. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for laughing. This podcast is over.